Good morning. Let me see, I haven't combed my hair yet. Um, grab my trademark Pendleton and I'm ready to talk some shit to you people today. So here's the deal. Have anybody heard about these so-called racial statements made by Rand Paul? Apparently, uh, years back when Paul was much younger, he did not have the affinity for the race. In other words, apparently Ron Paul had made several racist statements as a younger Ron Paul. Um, does it matter? Yeah. You shouldn't be a racist president in the United States of America. Uh, I remember the last time around, everybody was like, Obama, Obama's a, a Muslim. Well, let me tell you to your face, motherfuckers out there, it don't matter what religion you are. Now, nobody has to be, you have to be a Catholic or, you know, Christian to be president of the United States of America. If that's the case, there is no separation between church and state, and we need to throw everybody in office out. I'm not voting for a religion. I'm voting for a person who could do the best for me and my family. Ron Paul may not be that person. Barack Obama may not be that person. But we need to understand that we are still voting for millionaires. You can easily write Alonzo Hayden down the bottom of your damn ballot. Vote for me. The least I'll do is put together a commission to fix the crap. And, you know, and that's it. You know, um, we are too smart to be doing so many stupid things when it comes to uh, taking care of each other. Um, the Occupy movement is going to be down the street from my house today. I got my video cameras ready and I'm thinking about going down there. But once again, I pointed out that things won't change until white people got off their ass and make some changes. White people did get off their ass. Poor people did get off their ass. And they stood out there and they camped out and they did nothing. The thing is, the tactic they, they used was completely bogus. It was like a setup. They were all told to do something. They all did what they were told to do. And they knew it wouldn't work. You know, um, America had its protests, just like the Arab Spring. But the Americans' uh, protests uh, occupy whatever the fuck they want to call it. Sucks balls. And, um, you know, any balls. Occupy protest sucks anything. I mean, these people stood out there and got nothing accomplished, got nothing done. The senior element took over the movement, and booyah. Wasted time, wasted news press, just another distraction. And uh, just recently, Obama signed away our rights. So, what do we do? We vote for a millionaire. And that's wrong. So, um, did Ron Paul bust out some racial statements? I don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. People grow up and people change. But if you got that seed of dissent in you already, then you know it's not going to go away ever. You can't show basic respect for another person, rich or poor, black or white. That shit will never go away. You can uh, live with yourself by dealing with these people you deem to be beneath you. Oh, look at those blacks, the poor whites, the Mexicans. Oh, I smell it. Uh, let's get into another neighborhood. Drive. These are the people who guide us and govern us. Those who turn up their nose on us at every chance they get. Look at that white guy. Look at that black guy. Look at those people. We are those people. We are the 95%, not the 99%. We don't want to include none of them. Top 5% control everything, not the 1%. You know, and, um, you could think about it. The 1% cannot control if it was just them in charge. They have to... Uh, Give other people some sense of uh, security. And it may not be you or me, but uh, it's definitely one of them. So, um, Ron Paul and race. Obama and freedom. Occupy protest. And me. The real AIX. So, um, what do we do? We can't do anything. We're going to run around like a bunch of lemmings and enjoy it. First of all. 
well, not first of all, or least of all, or whatever next. Now, we had a pretty good year, you know. Uh, Christmas, New Year's Eve, fell on, you know, a good day. So now they want to change the calendar so Christmas and New Year's will always fall on a Sunday. Forever. Now let me take you back to a little twist here, because the conversation, we were going in one direction, and now I'm going to flip into another direction. Remember the Aztec calendar? It runs out! Remember? And everything gets a grand reset, and everything starts over, or whatever, or planets align, and vibration from the planets shake everything loose on Earth, and people are thrown into a mass chaos, all the satellites around the planet are destroyed. All the stuff that you've just put in the cloud, the cloud is gone. Electromagnetic pulses pounding the planet, destroying all technology. So they want to change the calendar. So I was listening to what they were talking about, how they've been moving the calendar forward. Move it forward every, like, two days a year, somebody was saying. How can you move the calendar forward two days a year? So think about it. The world was supposed to be ending December 20th, 2012. And they've moved the calendar up. They've been moving it up for how many years? And how many days have they saved up for this grand event? And now they're telling us, we want to make the calendar stay the same. So all the days fall in line the same. Hmm. So all this time they've been stealing since the 30s and 40s. These days, two days, three days, four days. All these years stealing these days. How much time have they accumulated for this grand event? Hmm. They want to keep us in the dark. We don't know what true day it is. Is it January right now? Or could we still be in October? Is it June? What day is it really? We don't know. All I know is they've been stealing days, and they've been stealing days, and they've been stealing days. For what? This grand event? I don't know. 2012, the end of the world, who gives a shit? All I know is the day after the end of the world, we'd be like, damn. It was supposed to end. And then somebody would be like, oh, wait a minute. We need to recalculate because they've been stealing days and stealing days. The world's going to end next month. And everybody's going to be like, ah! And I'll be like, yeah, okay, next month everything's going to end. It's going to be a grand event. The planets will line up. The planets will vibrate and shake earthquakes, and volcanoes and shit. And those who do survive will probably be rich people. Yeah, they'll be floating around in a space capsule. Oh, let's go check out the dark side of the moon for a couple of days while everybody on Earth is getting the shit shaken out of them. And when we go back, we'll just tell them we're a god. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, well, maybe not. So um, uh, let's rewind or fast forward. Let's go to another spot. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to talk about this, but the Oakland Raider meltdown. Six games to go, you know, what was it, five games to go? You only got to win one game. You know, just win one for Al Davis. Just win one. Just one more game. Very discouraging and sad. Golden State Warriors time. Yeah, I did a video a few weeks ago. It'll be out. It's called The Worst Day of My Life. It's based on the last preseason game where my cable was not the cable in which I used to watch the basketball. So I had to watch it on the computer and listen to it at the same time. Worst day of my life. So we're facing the Lakers tonight. I'm expecting a win. Yes, I am. Warriors, Lakers, tonight, 7.30 p.m., oh, well, 7 o'clock, I'm sorry, down in L.A., we're going to get that ass, thank you.
What else should I talk about? The playoffs. Playoffs! Everybody here in the Bay Area is San Francisco 49ers crazy. Okay, I'm going to root for the Niners because, you know, regional. As soon as they lose, I'll root for the closest person to me. But I got a feeling the 49ers is going to do pretty good. I got a feeling they're going to make it to the second round of the playoffs this year. Yes. Considering they got to buy the first week, they better make it to the second round of the playoffs. Next topic. The 9-11 Memorial. These people are making money off that shit. Next topic. Oprah Winfrey. Next topic. I have been watching 30 Rock lately. That is a funny show. Uh, Tina Fey actually looked pretty good. Tina Fey is hot. Oh, it's warm. You know. Yeah, she, she's all right. Tina Fey's all right. The funny women are cool. Uh, you know, when you look at actresses, the funny ones are cool. Like, remember Taya Leone? She was cool. What's that, Kathy Griffin? Next topic. Next topic. Yeah. That's what it is. Another topic after topic after topic after topic. Something to talk about. Never anything to think about. That's all it says is this world we live in is a great big talk show. And we're all talking. I don't like Herman Cain. I don't like Barack Obama. I don't like the tea party. I don't even like tea. Conversation. What will we say to each other just to make conversation? Some people will dirt on somebody. You know that man over there, man? He said some foul stuff about you back in the days, man. When you were younger, man, he talked bad about you, man. But how you doing? You know, or there's this guy you haven't seen in a long time, and somebody else saw the guy and said some, oh, man, he said, you said, you know, conversation. That's all we ever do. We sit back and pass judgment on everything around us and we talk about it. A lot of times we fail to realize that we're wasting our time by talking about things that don't really matter to us. The fact that Mel Gibson went off racist on his wife, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't give a shit. I don't care. He could have put his foot up her ass for all I care. As long as he ain't trying to put his foot in my wife's ass, I'm cool with Mel Gibson. And the same thing with everything these actors and artists do. Who gives a damn who Madonna's sleeping with or who uh, Tom Cruise wants to marry next or who Cher is going out with her or this guy, ooh, ooh, Kardashian. Who gives a damn about the Kardashians? None of the Kardashians are going to come to your house and worship your ass. Why the fuck you want to worship them? Remember... Let me flip back to the Bible. Somewhere in the Bible, though, it says you ain't supposed to worship any false idols. Didn't it say that somewhere in the Bible? The Bible, the great Bible. Hmm? King James's notebook. Is that it? Huh? Where some rich, dictating, cock-sucking, faggoty-ass motherfucking dictator motherfucker can rule and change words. God told me that. Did he tell King James? Who rewrote the Bible? Forget it, forget it, forget it. What are we? But mere human beings. What is a human being? A human being is what you told a human being is supposed to be, right? A human being is is an animal, correct? Right? What are we? But individual entities. I'm different. From her, from him, from them. We're all different. But we're all been trained and taught by the same people. The same entities who taught me how to be me, taught you how to be you. Taught them how to be them. And put them in a better place than me and you. 
people look at me like, oh, he's just talking in black again. No, I'm talking about financials. Old money, new money, no money, some money, dumb money, smart money, funny money, or your honey's money. We're lemmings. We're in need of something that we, we, we've created. We search for a god that nobody wants to admit exists or does not exist. Just the mere thought of an entity stronger than us is supposed to be hope for us to batter ourselves throughout this thing called life. What kind of entity would put us here and say, fuck you and roll around on that ball that I call Earth? Huh? Was it named Earth? Someone told us it was named Earth. Who told him or her what it was named? Hmm? Was it named Terra or Terror? Think about it. Because when we walk on it, we call it Terra Firma. But they say it's called Earth. The planet named Terra is Earth. What did the Indians call it? Hmm? Oh, it don't count because they were Indians. They don't get to name anything. You can't name anything unless you're from England or you're an aristocrat. You can go hop on a boat and go to Africa and name a river that's been there for thousands of years if you're an aristocrat. You can hop on your vessels with your armada and come to America and, and wipe out the Indians. And, you know, Papoose Bay is now, you know, the Mississippi River. We don't know. But what we do know is what we've been told. And what I do know is what we've been told has all been lies. So what is the truth? The truth is that you can make up your own decisions. The overwhelming truth is, like most Americans, you're probably afraid to. And if you can figure out what I just said in that riddle in which I just spoke, then you'd understand yourself a little bit better. We're not all here just to be here. We're not all here just to survive or just to be. We are here for a purpose and that purpose may have been blurred or even lied or even removed. So whatever this purpose is, the least we can do is be respectful towards each other as we go through this thing called life. Because if we can't learn to live and deal with and help each other, then who's going to help us? Hmm? Will it be some entity from outer space comes down and says, Hey, I'm God, and I'm here to help the Asian people only? Or, UFO comes down door pops open. I'm God. And then somebody like, if you're God, why do you need a spaceship? If you're God, why come your hair is not long? If you're God, how come your eyes aren't blue? He's a fake. What is your destiny? Are you going to do it yourself? Or are you going to let somebody else tell you? Are you going to live and do what's best for you and your family and the community around you? Or are you going to let somebody else tell you? That is the overall question. What are we? Who are we? And how come we're not helping each other? Why is it that if I'm thirsty, I got to buy that glass of water? You know? Where is the respect, the love, because in the end, we're just a creature. Just like the dogs, just like the birds, just like the fish, just like the ants, the slugs, the spiders, and the flies. Just something else causing grief and havoc on this world. Mere entities with no respect for other entities. We eat 
other entities. And if other entities ate us, we would stop them from eating us by all means necessary. You tell me. Why are we the top of the food chain? We killed the dinosaurs off. That's probably what happened. Well, there was a great event, and it killed all the dinosaurs. We don't know what happened, but we know all of the dinosaurs died. Well, if there was some dinosaur AIDS, dinosaur cancer, dinosaur skin disease, well, whatever killed the dinosaurs probably will be linked to us if we find out. But what kills us will definitely be linked to us. That's one thing I don't ever want to find out. Hopefully I'll be gone when everybody else fucks up. I've done all my fucking up. I'm done. Guy asked me the other day, why are you so laid back now? I'm 44 years old. What else is there for me to do? This little boy was so gangster when he go, oh, man, man. He's got my wife's cousin, you know, rap. He's a rapper. He's got a name tattooed on his arm and shit. And I like music like the other people. I knew this one girl named Vicky. Vicky had a Tupac car. I ain't lying. A Tupac car. I know people who knew Tupac personally. My cousin was in his little rap group and they used to rap and beatbox and all that stuff with Tupac and when he was lived over at my auntie's house. But I ain't gonna have no fucking Tupac car. I'm not gonna get a Tupac tattoo. You know what I'm saying? It's not gonna happen. My sister-in-law, she loves Mac Dre. They used to play Mac Dre forever, man. Just recently, they slowed down with the Mac Dre. She ain't got no Mac Dre tattoos. You know what I mean? Some people who need, they grab hold, and it becomes part of them. And we live in a society like that. We know somebody who even brushed fame. We're envious to that with that person. I mean, it's like, it's, it's incredible. See, I've met George Clinton. I've met Ricky Henderson. I've met a hell of people. Dr. John. I'm, I used to work at all the jazz festivals and the blues festivals and stuff. I met all those artists. But I'm, I might. <laughs> no, I'm not starstruck by it. Anybody. Period. Next topic. This is a cold, hard topic here, right here. Touches me to the core. You know. I haven't worked a long time. Six years, I believe. I had a job. And I had a car, and I worked, and I had tools. I had a lunch tab. You know, that's what the American man is missing. America was founded on companies. I'm not lying to you. And these companies... They built everything. You got a job in the 20s and 30s. If they hired you, you had a job for 40 years. There's people who got jobs in the 20s and the 30s that didn't get laid off and fired or whatever until the 70s. There's people who still on certain jobs in America have been there for 15 and 20 years. And now, I want to tell you that job longevity is no more in America. San Francisco's minimum wage, I think, is uh, $10.30 an hour. The federal minimum wage is still $7 and some change. Around here locally, I think it's like nine fifty. Why is the federal minimum wage lower? 
I don't know. Obama and a smaller army. So Obama is planning on shrinking the army down. Now, when you shrink the army down, what about all these people coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq? You're shrinking the army down. Are you going to shrink them too? You're creating a smaller army, more technologically advanced, less troops. Next topic. Farming in America. You know, if you notice, there's a lot of E. coli and shit popping up in food now. They're moving food off the shelves and people are, you know, you have recalls for cars and shit. There's food recalls, mass, 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 mass food recalls. There's poisoned baby food. There's, you know, all kind of crazy crap going on right now with food. But, you can get in trouble if you start growing your own. Next topic. Growing your own. Here in America, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of problems with people and drugs. And in this country, um, you know, drug use is, is the norm. People have to get high and medicate themselves to deal with regular everyday life. So here in the state of California, they have legalized marijuana, you know, for those who have a license to smoke. In other words, you know, I got voices in my head or whatever, and I'm pissed off, and I can only cope by having to toke every now and then and shutting the hell up and being by myself. So they allow people to have that toke. And on the same token that these marijuana clubs here in California are being infiltrated, they believe, by Mexican drug cartels. So now, in the state of California, they're going to make it illegal again for marijuana. But you can grow your own. The thing is, they want to shut down the clubs. Now, what was stupid is this experiment, I'll get to that word later, was based on, you know, okay, this state, they have their laws, this state has their laws, but here in California, apparently the laws are too lax, and a couple of these these clubs that are popping up are not legitimate. These clubs are being run by so-called cartel members or spinoffs of cartels or what have you, so they want to stop that by allowing people to grow their own. In other words, we already got the right to grow our own, but they want to make us a collective. In other words, me and my three neighbors or whatever who all grow will become a collective. All three of us will be able to trade with amongst ourselves our smoke. Thus, we won't have to go to the store anymore and buy it. I can get something from him. If he got it, he can get something from me. So on and so forth as long as we're licensed. Thus, that takes the money out of it. Well, this is the state of California, and we're hurting right now. A lot of cities and towns use this money paid in taxes to, you know, support the communities. If this new plan goes through, you can't charge anybody for marijuana anymore because they're growing it themselves. If they can't sell it, it will become a felony. Big time. Bigger than what it is now if you're caught selling it. Makes sense? There was a revenue stream, then they cut it off. Next topic. Next topic. So, I was going to do the show called 40 Minutes. You will all know that it works. The 40 Minute Show once a week would work. I was told that I couldn't do a 40 Minute Show. Somebody emailed me and told me that that's somebody else's has a show called 40 Minutes, and I'm like, well, this is YouTube. I'm not on ABC, NBC, CBS, I'm on YouTube. I have 1,400 subscribers on YouTube. 
my videos are seen all over the world. I have less, well, a little over a million hits on YouTube, the total of my videos. But on TubeWatcher, I got over four or five million hits. I'm not lame. I am an entity. I am a force. Since I've changed things on this channel, um, yeah, I'm losing subscribers. Yeah, so what? I'm also losing hits. Mm, so what? It doesn't matter to me. I found that um, every time they offer me revenue for my channels, um, I'm getting these click violations solely because I find my videos on spider sites. And the spider site is where they have a video such as the one I'm on right now. And on the side of it, you'll see advertisements on this side and that side. Yeah. My finger right. Where's the finger at? Okay. The advertisements go up and down the side over there. There also be advertisements across the bottom and off to this side over here. Oh, wait, this side over there. You know what I mean. So there's advertisements all around my video. I go ahead and then YouTube or whatever offers me, you know, revenue for the video. They already got my video on a spider site. So whenever one person clicks on the video, it clicks on every one of their advertisements around the video. Thus giving me a click violation. That's not my web page. You see what I'm saying? So that is the crux of the click violations. You got your your videos that are semi, you know, popular. You cause YouTube will never let you know if you're in the mainstream. I learned that. You know, um, you know, when you put a video out on YouTube and then you put a video out anywhere else on the same day, you'll notice by the end of the day on the other page you got four or five hundred hits and on YouTube you only got three hits. And when you do your math when you look back and you find your video on 15 or 20 different websites and it's their featured video, you figure, okay, my video is featured on some website and I'm not getting a hit for that. You see what I'm saying? So you look at every time, you know, your videos on YouTube and you don't get any hits, but you see somebody else's video. It's like a video, there's no way possible that you could put a video up and only get one hit. It's illogical. The way the way the way this thing is set up, if you title your video, there's no way you could not get any hits on your video. The second that video's up, somebody is watching it. The second it is up. Matter of fact, while the video is processing, somebody is watching the video. And the thing is, this bothers me the most because out of all the pages I have, as soon as I'm offered revenue, the video's on a spider website. And I think they know it. I think they know how many places your video's in before they even let you do it. They offer you revenue so they can continue to get paid. They're getting paid. And like I pointed out in that last one video, the guy tells you at the bottom of my video, you can make $15,000 a week doing this. One click funding or whatever it's called. And it makes me mad because these people are getting paid for other people's videos and the other people who are doing the work will go ahead and apply like they're supposed to and then they'll be denied because of click violations created by somebody else's company who is still getting paid for your videos. So this is what ticks me off as we do move into the next year. You know, I can never get paid now for my videos, but I can sit back and watch people get 